So you're ready to baste your EPP templates? Well, first we're going to have to get this fabric stuck to the paper template itself. So we're going to put just a little bit of washable glue stick on the template, hardly any as you can see, and then we'll press the glue side down to the wrong side of our fabric. You want to make sure that you have roughly 3 eighths of an inch of fabric margin on all sides around the template. And then you just trim away the fabric. So again, leaving that 3 eighths of an inch or thereabouts margin. And as you can see, your cuts don't have to be perfectly straight here, and they don't even have to be particularly even. As long as you end up with that margin, you're fine. And that's all there is to it, and now we're ready to baste this thing. So the first step of basting is to start at the edge that the pattern tells you to and fold the fabric over the template. And you finger press it so you get a nice little crease like you saw there. And then you'll fold the next adjacent edge over. And then the point where those two edges meet, that's where we're going to put something called a tack stitch. And that's done like this. You just put your needle right under the fold where those two edges meet. It's really important to notice that the needle never passes through the paper template. It only skims through the layers of fabric that are sitting on top of the template. So we'll pull the thread through here, and then what you'll do is you'll take a second stitch, a pretty much identical stitch, right in the same location. And when you pull that taut, you have a tiny little stitch that holds that corner down beautifully. So now we'll move on to the next side fold the new edge of fabric over, give it a finger press, and we'll take a tack stitch at the next juncture between these two sides, right at the corner. And again, we're not going through the paper, just the fabric. What's cool about the tack stitches are these long stitches that form up between them. When I pull my thread taut, the tension of that thread between is what holds the edge of the fabric down so smoothly and beautifully against the paper. And so to keep basting, I'll just keep repeating this process. Fold down the next edge and make another tack stitch. And I'll work my way around the patch this way. You can really baste most patches in this manner, although in a minute we'll get to a second technique you might need for some patches. Now when you get to the final corner, you want to do things just a little differently. You might be thinking, oh, I just need to fold this edge over this edge. But what happens when you do it that way is you end up with a whole lot of layers of fabric tucked right up under the starting point of your tack stitch and it makes the tack stitch harder. So instead, always tuck the last edge of fabric you work with under the first edge of the fabric that you work with. And you may notice that when doing that, it makes all the folds along the edge of this patch go in the same direction. That's how you know you did it right. So like we've been doing, we'll take one final tack stitch here at this point. You may be noticing as we go through these that my tack stitches are not all the same size, they're not that perfect. You know what, it doesn't really matter as long as the fabric is smoothly covering the patch. I'm going to end this thread the way I like to, uh, just by passing my needle through the seam allowance here at the last edge. I pull it through and then I'll cut it with about a two inch tail. So that tucks up very nicely against the patch, but I can still access it if I need to. And so the back of my patch looks a little wonky, but what matters is the front of my patch is very smooth with precise edges. That's going to stitch up just beautifully. Now sometimes you might want to baste a much larger patch than what we just worked with, and in those cases you're going to need an extra stitch called a basting stitch. So to begin, what we'll do is our normal thing. We will fold the two first edges over the paper template. We'll take a tack stitch here at the point where those two edges meet. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move to about the center of this next edge. Okay, and we are going to take a basting stitch near the center. A basting stitch differs from a tack stitch because the basting stitch goes through everything, it goes through the paper and all layers of fabric. So you pass the needle down and you pass it back up about a half an inch away, quarter inch away pull the thread through, and now you have an anchoring stitch right at the center of that edge, which you can see from the front of the patch, by the way, and that's going to keep the fabric nicely folded over. And so we'll alternate these two things. At each corner of this big patch, we'll take a tack stitch, 
and then at the center of each edge we'll take one of these basting stitches. This method is really only necessary when you're working with large patches. Although some EPPers baste entirely with basting stitches, they never use the tacks. I'm just a big fan of the tacks because I think they make a smoother patch, but if you wanted to just baste with basting stitches, you totally could. Okay, we're at our final corner. We're going to do the usual. We're going to tuck the last edge under the first edge of fabric. We're going to take a tack stitch at this last corner. And then in our final side here, we'll take one final basting stitch to anchor that. And then we'll go ahead and end the thread as usual, tuck it through the seam allowance, and then go ahead and cut it with a little bit of a tail. So you can see from the front of the patch that there's a basting stitch along each edge now, and we'll have to remove this basting to get the paper out, but we'll talk about that in your pattern, of course. But this is all ready to go. As I mentioned a minute ago, EPP basting is a really individualized thing. So if you don't like to baste the way that I do, please don't. If you want to baste entirely with basting stitches, you can. You can really put those stitches in any pattern. They can look huge or tiny or wonky or whatever you want. The only result you need is to have the fabric smoothly covering the front of the patch. So do it the way you like. And that's it.